Okay, so I'm gonna re-record this because I was like stammering the crap out of my other video. Um, it's been a little while since I did an update, so I figured I'd go ahead and take care of that. I'm like 15, 15 or 16 weeks on T. I honestly haven't been keeping track. I have to check. Um, I do know that I'm four days late taking my shot. I haven't been able to bring myself to jam myself on the needle lately. More on that later. Um, for T changes, a little bit more body hair, mostly right in here. Like, I actually feel uncomfortable shaving, or feel uncomfortable not shaving at this point. Um, I notice my hairline is starting to pull back a little bit farther in here, right in here, starting to thin out. I used to pull my hair really badly on both sides, but on this side especially, I used to pull it out. I used to rip it out when I'd get nervous, and I haven't been doing that for like ages now, but my hairline is actually starting to pull in here. This is thinning out. It's kind of interesting. Um, it's still growing. <laughs> Uh, acne right on the shoulders. It's not too bad right now, but there's six or seven dozen spots on both my arms. It's not up here, it's just right here on the surface of the arms where this hair has been creeping up. Like, usually you have arm hair, and the arm hair stops like here, and it's been creeping this way, and it's been creeping this way up my arms, and so I've been getting lots of little acne spots there, and um, not on my chest, but down here on the top of my stomach where the hair's been kind of creeping upward I've been getting it so I'm glad I got um, a benzoyl peroxide wash because I scrub it and the acne spots go away in a couple days and then when they come back I scrub it again I don't, I don't use it regularly like I should it was just too expensive but um, my voice doesn't crack as much as it used to which is really pleasant I don't necessarily notice it dropping as much anymore, although I'm sure everybody will be like, oh god, your voice has been dropping. Um, it's more that my voice isn't cracking and gurgling when I try and talk in a lower pitch or in a lower tone, so that's kind of neat. Um, I also notice it hasn't been cracking nearly as bad when I'm talking in other pitches and ranges also, which is helpful because this is how I talk at work, and it's not entirely pleasant or professional or comfortable to have my voice be like that <laughs> when I'm trying to talk about the benefits of planting lantana or perennial geraniums or something so that's cool I still can't yell if I try and bring my voice much above a very loud conversational volume it cracks and it's <laughs> like give it up. and so it's currently on my schedule of things to do for next spring, when I have money again, to get a voice trainer, yeah, like a voice trainer coach or a speech therapist so I can find if there are any exercises or things that I can do to work on strengthening my voice. Um, any of you guys who have any advice, I'm open to advice, give me your advice, because for my own safety and the safety of others in some situations, it would be nice to be able to yell. I don't like not being able to be loud. <laughs> um, voice cracking, body hair, acne. Uh, I swear any genital growth I was going to get, I got in like the first three weeks because I've noticed next to nothing. My girlfriend tells me I'm wrong. I don't think... I've been getting much of anything along the lines of genital growth. <laughs> My nose is bigger. <laughs> so, um... It'll be interesting over the course of a couple years to find out if staying on lower doses than average affects genital growth for other queer people who care about that kind of stuff. So, there's that. Okay, so I'm four days late on my shot. One, because I'm having a hell of a time getting my prescription filled for needles and I'm terrified of running out of clean needles. I don't want to have to reuse my needles. I have more than enough trouble jamming myself with one in the first place. But also because I'm struggling to sort out how I feel about taking tea, I have in my life history, not personally, but family and friends, there's a lot of drug abuse, 
I guess you could say, in the people I've been around in my life, and so a lot of the effects and attitudes and behaviors that come along with me injecting are kind of like giving me the heebie-jeebies, just being kind of honest and silly there for a minute. It's kind of creepy for me to be jamming a needle in myself that has a substance in it that's going to affect the way my body works. Like, it's one thing to eat food and have the food fuel your body. That's a natural process. Taking something that was made in a laboratory and putting it into my body and changing my body chemistry with it is... I don't even like taking aspirin and ibuprofen. I really don't unless I have something to do which I need it to function for that is more important than how I feel at the time. Like, being able to go and get food or something. I don't like putting foreign substances in my body could be that tied with my eating disorder or otherwise it's just not something I'm comfortable with and having gotten a lot of the things that I was really desperate to get out of testosterone I don't have the same like how do I put it I don't have the same fervent desperation to take it that I did at first. I, my fears and concerns about it are winning out over my desire to continue affecting changes from it. So it's kind of a, I'm trying to see how I feel about it. I'm trying to work out what of my thoughts and emotions are caused by my hormone levels changing, which ones are influenced by my hormone levels changing, and which ones are consistent so I can get a feel for whether or not I'm honestly comfortable with it. I don't like having doubts about a substance and its benefits to my health and not knowing how I feel about the substance and then in taking the substance in some form and then within a couple of hours having all of my doubts, con fears, concerns, and worries entirely disappear and then resurface again when it substance is starting to wear off. It just it strikes too strongly with my fear of drugs and my avoidance of drugs and other mind-altering substances. So I have to still work out how I feel about that before I'm going to be able to decide whether or not I want to continue doing it. I know that at some point in my future, even if I decide to stop taking it now, taking it again is going to be there because there are still masculine traits that I desire, and I do still really prefer the way I function when I'm on it. But I need time to adjust. Smaller dose than usual or not, I got a lot of changes a lot faster than I was expecting, and I want to adjust to them and see how I feel about them before I, like, start doing more of this stuff to myself. I still have to work out how I feel about getting top surgery. <laughs> honestly how I feel about getting top surgery and I still need to work out when, how, and if I'm going to get my plumbing removed. I'd love to. I would love to, but I am not always positive and consistent about my opinion on it, so I still have to work on that. But I will definitely keep updating and watching videos and doing other stuff and whatnot. But just so that everybody who watches my channel has an idea of where I am right now. I haven't forgotten you guys. I'm just kind of working things out. Um, I just don't want to make the wrong choices.